What's up everybody, this is Investing Sensei here bringing you another episode in the series of how many shares of a certain company do you need to uh, have to make $1,000 a month, $100 a month, and even $100 a week. Uh, so these are definitely really fun videos to make because we pull up the calculator, crunch some numbers, and uh, we get some projections to see uh, how much you'd have to have invested in total pretty cool uh, but in this episode guys we are going to be going over armor residential uh, this is the next one on the list uh, this is the current list i do have so if there's actually a company i have not covered in the past or you don't see it on the list let me know in the comment section i'll be happy to add it uh, and then we'll eventually get to it but uh, let's go ahead and jump over to seeking alpha so uh, ticker symbol is a r r armor residential reit inc uh, currently trading about five dollars and 57 cents if we actually pull down uh, the company profile we can read a little bit about them see uh, what they do so armor uh, residential reit uh, invests in residential mortgage backed securities uh, also known as mbs in the united states the company securities uh, portfolio uh, primary uh, primarily consists of the united states government uh, sponsored entities which uh, are also referenced as gse in the government national mortgage uh, administrations issued or guaranteed securities uh, backed by fixed rate hybrid adjustable rate and adjustable rate home loans as well as unsecured notes and uh, bonds issued by the gse in the united states treasury as well as money uh, market instruments uh, so that's a little bit about the company you'll see that in the sector they are in the financial sector uh, industry is in the mortgage REITs uh, employees it's actually not showing any employees here so uh, that information is not available uh, founded was in 2008 uh, you'll see that uh, their website is armorreits.com in case you want to read a little bit more about them uh, you know and if we go back up here we can uh, actually look at the charts guys so if we look at the year to date uh, they're actually down 44.52% uh, if we look at the one year uh, they're down 45.92% and then if we look at the five year uh, it's actually down 77.32% so very very bad performance here uh, in capital appreciation uh, in the stock here we look at the 10 year they're actually down 89.9 uh 89.72 percent which is a horrible return guys for 10 years uh, if we look at the total since they've been ipo'd or publicly traded uh, they've been down 92.34 percent uh, so this is pretty pretty bad this is if you were to invest uh i guess this since they ipo'd back in 2008 uh, if you had put a hundred dollars back in 2008 right now uh, those $100 would actually be worth only about eight dollars not counting dividends that they do pay out uh, so very very bad performance there if we look at the 52 week range uh, the lowest they've actually traded has been four dollars 38 cents they're actually trading towards the closer towards that uh, the 52 week high uh, has been ten dollars 45 cents if we look at the eps is 1.15 uh, pe is 4.86 uh, dividend rate is a dollar and 20 cents and then uh, the dividend yield is 21.54 percent uh, uh, and then you'll see the market cap is actually a seven uh 751.88 million market cap so a small company here if uh, we actually pull up the uh, dividend scorecard again they are in the financial sector and then if we look at the dividend summary here guys uh, dividend yield is 21.54 percent very very high dividend yield here uh, definitely concerning here maybe they could potentially cut it i'm not sure uh, you'd have to look more into uh, this company but uh, these are typically the higher end dividend yields that uh, potentially get kicked cut or they're not sustainable at all uh, but if you look at the annual payout you'll get a dollar and 20 cents for every share you do, that you own of this company pay payout ratio is 103.45 percent five-year kager is actually in the negative so potentially they cut it in the past 
uh, no dividend growth here so that kind of sucks and then the frequency they do pay out is monthly uh, they pay out 10 cents every single month for each share that you own uh, but uh, yeah let's go ahead and pull up the calculator we'll crunch some numbers uh, again let me know if you're invested in this company somebody did uh, recommend this company for me to do in uh, this series uh, i am not invested in it but uh, i'd be excited to see if you guys are uh, and why uh, but first thing we're gonna do is let's calculate how much do we need to own of this company to make one thousand dollars a month uh, that's usually a pretty good goal imagine making a thousand dollars in a in a single stock that would be pretty awesome but you need one thousand dollars is what we want to make uh, where well, there's actually 12 months in a year so in total for annual payout we need to make twelve thousand uh, dollars you're actually going to grab the annual payout that this company pays so divide this uh, twelve thousand by a dollar and twenty cents this will actually give you the total number of shares that you need to uh, achieve that uh, once you get that you actually just multiply it times the current share price and uh, this would actually give you fifty five thousand seven hundred dollars that you'd have to have invested in this company at the current share price and uh, you'd be roughly making about a thousand dollars a month and that's assuming that uh, they don't cut that dividend uh, but uh, again a quick way to calculate this is you do the twelve thousand that you need to make divided by the actual dividend yield so uh, 0 0.2154 uh, and uh, you'll see we roughly get about 55,000 as well uh, that's a quick way to calculate that uh, another one that we want to do is what how much do you need to own to make $100 a month so you'd have $100 uh, there's 12 months in a year uh, so you need to make about 1,200 you could actually divide the previous uh, answer of 55,000 divided by uh, 10 and that would be your answer but since we do want to just go ahead and go through the numbers uh, we can do that so divide this by the annual payout uh, so $1.20 uh, you'll see we get $1,000 or I guess not $1,000 but 1,000 shares is what we need uh, you actually multiply this times the share price uh, $5.57 and uh, you need to roughly own about five thousand five hundred and seventy dollars in this company and you'd be roughly making one hundred dollars again assuming they don't cut this dividend uh, so a quick way to calculate this again is one thousand two hundred divide this by the uh, dividend yield uh, so that gives you roughly around the five thousand five hundred seventy one dollars uh, that you'd have to own uh, in this company let's do the last one which is $100 every single week this one's usually pretty awesome because imagine every single week you get an additional $100 from a company uh, but uh, you'd, you'd want to do 100 times 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year so roughly you have to make about $5,200 every uh, year uh, you divide this by the annual payout again uh, which is $1.20 this gives you the total number of shares that you do need to own so 4,333 uh, shares uh, multiply this times the share price and uh, this would actually give you uh, the total amount uh, so you'd have to roughly have about twenty four thousand dollars invested in this company uh, assuming again that they don't cut it a quick way to calculate this is five thousand two hundred which is what we want to make divide that by the uh, dividend yield two one five four uh, for the dividend yield and uh, you'll see you roughly get about twenty four thousand dollars so that's that is the numbers for this company guys again let me know if you are invested in this company and why are you invested in the short term long term uh, do you think that the dividend uh, will actually get cut or is it very sustainable uh, but let's go ahead and jump to the last part which is the dividend yield so we can wrap up this video uh, so you'll see here's the dividend yield as it fluctuates over time and uh, this typically tells you when the best opportunity to enter this company uh, would have been so you'll see here that 2017 they were around nine percent ten percent and uh, that's where they were fluctuating right around the 2020 crash is where this company's dividend yield spiked up and that's probably potentially why, where the actual share price did go down in price uh, so remember as the price of the company goes down the dividend yield goes up uh, assuming they don't cut the dividend uh, so here and then it's actually been going downwards a little bit uh, but overall guys 
this is armor residential let me know if you are invested as well don't forget to subscribe with that notification we're trying to get to uh, 9,000 subscribers so help me out uh, as well drop a big thumbs up on the video definitely appreciate it let me know any new companies you want me to add to the list i will talk to you guys later take care stay safe out there bye guys